What's up, everybody? Excited to come to y'all with some awesome things to talk about from this past game. One of the biggest things that I want to talk about is our defense. We have a national championship level defense. Now, we need the offense to do some things to progress and continue to get better. But at the same time, we showed a lot, especially in about a two and a half minute span at the very end of the second quarter. And one of those things is the pick right before half. All right. The first thing that happened in our favor is you got Dan Mullen, who feels like he's getting pressed right before half after having two turnovers in a row. Uh, we capitalize and get points off of those turnovers. Um, two turnovers in a row. He's got a true freshman or retro freshman quarterback with Richardson, and he feels like he's still got to push the ball down the field and try to make something happen. So when this happens, you put a kid that's young, a little bit inexperienced, in a bad situation. There was only 12 seconds left in the half. So it's 12 seconds left in the half. In the half, Ball was on the minus 47-yard line. So it's on their 47. They haven't even crossed the 50. They're just trying to get a play off to be able to get the ball down the field, call a timeout, and get a field goal. They're not even trying to score right here, okay? So in a lot of cases, a, a, a better move might have been just to run the ball with your young quarterback. Hey, let's get out of this half. It already is a disaster. Let's not turn it into a catastrophe. But thankfully, he decided to push the ball down the field. And what we see is athletes making plays with Nicobe Dean. Once again, we're going to talk about him twice in coverage, making big, big plays. Um, one was very obvious with this pick. The second one was on a fourth down later in the game. But athletes in space making plays on running backs um, is what kind of set us apart. So, we get, we get them to set up. Uh, they get into a five-wide set. They get their running back all the way out here to the field. Now, when they get their running back to the field, that basically takes them to Kobe Dean outside. So when we get into third and long or into situations where we think they're going to be throwing the ball, we like to get into two-man, all right? Basically, what we're trying to do is create trail techniques, all right, behind. We're going to basically lag behind and push everybody to these safeties, all right? So what they end up running is a double post here, all right, in which we get up under on this guy. We're underneath. We got a safety over top. We've got that covered. The Anthony Richards actually makes a good quick read because we're playing off right here at a linebacker position. But the good thing is he also knows that with this, he's got help over the top in case he does outside release, all right? He can make that a very hard throw in the hole, okay? So he gets the squat or sit on this route, all right? What you see here is DeAnthony actually takes a little bit too long to decide, hey, I'm just gonna take what the defense is giving me, all right? He takes a little bit too long. He kind of floats the ball out here. The kid's got a strong arm, but on the play, you see Nicobe get his eyes. As soon as he sits down, he gets his eyes inside. He drives and takes the ball. Now, this is uh, really three People could be at fault. One, Dan Mullen for throwing the ball, all right? We love to blame Dan Mullen for anything we can. But Dan Mullen throwing the ball on, on that end of the quarter, just run the ball, get into halftime, all right? Two, all right, you got a running back out here that's not used to running a lot of routes, okay? So is he supposed to push a little harder, make him back up slightly, threaten him vertically? Yeah, he's supposed to get him to back up, make him uncomfortable. This is a linebacker. Let's make him uncomfortable out in space. All right, he doesn't do that. He basically pushes to three and a half, four yards and backs into his route, okay? When he does that, we do a great job of number 17, Nicobe, taking off, coming downhill. And then also, once again, it's on this guy ultimately to make the play and make the throw, all right? He doesn't make it. We do great job, Nicobe, being heads up, knowing the situation, knowing that they're going to want to basically take something to the outside quick if, we, if they can get it. Good job breaking, great job getting your hands on the ball, picking the ball when you got the opportunity and then scoring right before half. That was huge, great, great way to end the half and really kind of take this game and make the Florida fans start walking out at, in the middle of the third quarter. So great job defense, let's keep rolling. All right, the second play I want to talk about, uh, once again, Nicobe Dean showing that he's an absolute freak. All right, but later in the game, we get Florida getting down into our – close to our red zone. Um, they're getting down into a fourth down and 
uh, I believe it was fourth and one, and then they jump off sides. All right, so they get fourth and one. We shift like we always do. Somehow they jump off sides because they didn't know it was coming. All right, and they end up in fourth and six. Okay, now we get into a fourth and six situation. We just talked about what our defense likes to do in passing situations. We like to go two man. We like to man up. We like to play a technique in which we think can really help us basically take our athletes, spread everybody out, and make plays all over the field. So we actually get into a look that shows that two-man look, okay? So they basically look to the sideline, and you're going to see Mullen see this matchup right here. This is their running back, number six, uh, Naquan Wright. All right, it's a kid from uh, down south, down in South Florida, really good athlete. All right, he sees him matched up with our Mike, Mike, Mike linebacker, uh, Nicobe Dean. All right, so he sees that. He likes it. He thinks it's two-man. All right, so what he's going to do is he's going to run a mandatory outside release, all right, which means these receivers have to run through the outside shoulder of our corners and take them deep. So it's two-man. They think we're just running those guys off. All right, also, we're going to basically run this guy on a speed out, run this guy on a speed out, okay? All this is going to do – and we're backing up at safety. All this is going to do is create a whole bunch of space, basically create a playground for that running back to run an option route, okay? So we get a little outside release, all right? He comes, attacks us. We stay high into his inside, all right? And then when he sticks his foot in the ground and went across, Nakobe does a great job of getting just enough of his back arm on him to kind of slingshot himself around and drive and knock down that play. Now, Let's uh, dig a little bit deeper as to why this worked, okay? One, they thought, again, that we were going to be in two-man, all right? Two-man, the reason you play two-man is to basically force these guys deep to our safeties over top. But these guys are going to play what's called a trail technique, okay? They're basically going to get in the back hip pocket of the receiver and try to push them vertical. They're also trying to undercut anything outside. Now, they're going to wall the heck out of anything inside, and then they're going to undercut anything outside. So they are literally trying to make you throw the ball over the top, all right? But what happens is the defense that we're actually in, all right, is more of basically they ended up coning these two guys with these three guys, basically meaning if this guy was to go out and this guy was to go here, we would have switched them off, and the safety is going to basically protect the middle of the field, all right? And we were locked on in a corner outside, all right? So the reason that this helps us, all right, is one, we do not try to jump into trail technique right away. Because if we do that and the running back does get to cross our face right there, that really, really, really hurts us, okay? That is a very hard thing for us to stop, all right? The other thing is he might have jumped so hard inside that Naquan Wright might have read it. A different way, took a little out route right there. They hit him right there in the space and they get vertical. Okay, so we stay a little bit higher. We still are protecting the inside, but as soon as he tries to cross our face because he thinks he's got us on two, cover two man, we're able to stick our foot in the ground and drive and undercut that route. Just the technique that we were playing, the the uh, the game plan that we had and the the defensive scheme that we had allowed our guy to play a little bit faster, play a little bit more aggressive because he knew he had that held directly over top of him and outside of him, allowed us to make a play, big play on fourth down, kept him out of the end zone, big, big play later on in the game. All right, now let's talk about some offensive things that happened. One of the things that we did great, all right, on Saturday was basically taking advantage of all the different turnovers that happened right before half, okay? One of them the defense scored on, but the first two, all right, number one, we had a great run play called. Our O-line does a great job blocking, sealing off basically a pressure. Also, we kind of tricked them because we were on unbalance, which was really good. We kind of sugar huddled and sprinted to the line of scrimmage. They brought the pressure to the tight end side. Tight end was the end man right here. We had an extra offensive lineman tackle over, basically, and we basically ran outside zone to our extra offensive lineman, cut everything off and ended up blocking everybody into, on his way to the end zone. All right, so that was really good. But the next the next turnover we had, the interception, after Nolan Smith's interception, we basically get into a formation 
And we know that Grantham in these situations likes to get aggressive, okay? So what we do is we call up a big protection, we call up a shot, all right? So we get lined up, all right? We keep our tight end in, all right? And in this set, we always like to run the ball here. They're basically saying, hey guys, why don't you run the ball right to this area? Because they're acting like this sand is outside of our, of our number two receiver. Normally that would mean this guy has to fill here, okay? So one or two things can happen. One, he fills here off this play action that we do, all right, and we run by, or two, he jumps inside, which is exactly what happens. But that leaves this strong safety on an island, okay? So what we do right here is we run a little stop route outside, all right? We basically take this guy. As soon as he steps inside, this guy knows, hey, this is my man, all right? They are now in what we call four man, okay? Which means that this guy's really in the run fit. This guy's really in the run fit. He's in the run fit. He's, they've got eight guys basically attending the box in the run fit. We get a great play action fake in which we step up, we chip, we get to the flat. We got something over here just in case it is one high. We're going to high load the boundary. All right. But they end up giving, getting, giving us exactly what we wanted to the field. We run, step on toes, and basically just run an inside fade. What this does is gives that receiver plenty of room to continue to run by this guy and also the quarterback plenty of room to lay this ball in the outside bucket. It's not running from the sideline or the numbers to the sideline you know, six yards. It's now all of a sudden you've got 20 yards of space to drop this ball in the bucket. Stetson Bennett does a great job with this play action and his eyes getting this guy to step in. He even bites just slightly. We beat him. Uh, Jackson runs right by him. We put it on touchdown dogs. We're really putting it on him at this point. This is a really, really, this is a great job of our offense taking advantage of that opportunity presented by the defense. All right, the last play I want to break down is a third down uh, play in which we did not convert. Okay, now, this was something that I saw that uh, I had to look back at and kind of try to figure out why we did what we did. Not necessarily as a play call, but what we did at quarterback. Okay, now let's break it down, all right? We're gonna bring this guy in motion and we're basically gonna run what's called a star route, snag route, whatever you wanna call it to the boundary, in which McConkey runs a little hitch. He's just basically trying to sit inside that uh, little triangle of uh, defenders. We're gonna run a corner to run off the safety and we're gonna run this guy to the flat right now, okay? All right, so we got that over here. To this side, we're basically running double slant as quick as possible. We're going to run a quick slant here. We're pushing up and coming flat right there, okay? Normally, the way this route is read um, is one high, I'm going to take this side, okay? Now, if I get one high, I'm also, what we used to do is call robber read, okay? A robber read... And this is just the way that we used to do it, all right? Robert Reed is basically what we were going to do is if it's one high, we're going to find one guy that has nobody to cover, all right? So if we were to look at it, we were to say he would have him, he would have him. We're assuming it's man, he's got him, he's got him, and he's got him, okay? So in this Robert Reed, this guy is my robber, Okay. So what this does, if it's one high, is it allows me to know, all right, if this guy works this side, he's obviously going to take this away. They have a little chance to fall under this and take that away. They can take that boundary away. But if he stays here, all right, I should be working that side. So wherever he goes, I'm going to work away from him, okay, is ultimately what's going to happen, all right? If they were reading it this way, it would have helped. Um, I don't know what how they progress it, but – in this instance, what happened, all right, is not only did the robber work away or the low hole player work away, they actually brought this Sam on pressure, okay? So they go here. All right, now, him bringing this Sam on pressure doesn't just affect us because of the protection or because of the read or whatever it is, all right? It allows them to get an extra hat. So what we normally do, this is a five wide play we're going five wide we're getting everybody out and we're doing blocking with our five up front normally what you like to do if, if the back is going this way all right you like to set the slide or the protection away from the back 
The reason you do that is because normally, all right, in a base defense, just like I assumed in my Arata read, that this Sam should be responsible for that back, okay? Now, what Florida did a great job of, all right, was they actually left this mic a little bit farther backside, okay, which I think kind of spooked uh, – our guy over here, our quarterback, into working the field or the boundary instead of working the field. You kind of see him before the play peek out here at the wheel. He kind of is trying to decide whether he's inside, outside, all that kind of stuff. He sees the mic there. He's like, you know what? I think it's just one rat. They're manned up everywhere. They're trying to spy me with the mic, which is something that I would also be looking at with our guy Stetson Bennett with wheels. That could be a very much a possibility. So he sees that. He's not thinking there's any kind of pressure. He leaves the basically the slide to the field away from the back. All right. So they get us, and that's okay with me. Okay. As a quarterback and a quarterback coach, if they get me, that's fine. Just know where your hot route is, know where you know where you're going with the ball. All right. And this is why I think he ultimately gets into the flat. All right. Basically, we get here, we cross face, we get a free runner right in our face, okay, because we squeeze down a tackle guard, and we across the board, we are working to the field, all right? So, naturally, my thought process is, hey, let's get this ball out of my hands to the flat right now as quick as I can, okay? What this does, all right, is makes him get the ball out of his hand. These guys actually do a great job. The corner falls off, he takes that. The strong safety is the one that drives outside right there and we end up pushing to the mic all right the mic ends up pushing to mcconkey right there in, in the hole all right if he would have seen a little bit cleaner he might could have been right there and been a little bit more patient putting on mcconkey for the first down but he gets the ball out of his hands if he's a little bit more accurate with his ball and doesn't leave it high maybe we're able to protect ourselves at the back and make a play on the safety i don't know but at the end of the day here's what i'm going to say with jt uh, we might be able to see something. We might be able to get out of this play, maybe even slide the protection. He sees it, and all we do is hit this guy right here, and we're in for the end zone. So things that could be better, all right, is us understanding pre-snap what's going on at the quarterback position, uh, being a little bit quicker with our calls, getting up to the line of scrimmage, and really taking command. He likes to play and react. That's okay. That's his game. You saw it throughout the game in which he made plays with his feet, he did things that we're not going to be able to do with other guys on the field. And that's who he is. That's okay. But when it comes down to it, if you're playing to react and you're playing to be quick and basically just take what the defense gives you, you've got to, number one, make an accurate throw, and number two, be willing to take a shot in the mouth every now and then because you know you're hot to make sure we get that ball to Brett and get that first down. So a lot of things that could have happened, a lot of things that should have happened on offense, it's okay. At the end of the day, we did a good job overall of keeping our defense in a position and not putting them in a bad position, all right, by making turnovers deep in our own personal territory, all right. We kept them on their side of the field. We played a little bit of the field position game, and that is okay. We need to continue to understand that that's a good thing. Our defense can help us score points by creating turnovers, giving us the momentum and allow us to do things. And when we, get it, when we get the opportunities, we need to do a better job of staying disciplined, both on the offensive line with the quarterback play and everybody surrounding him doing a great job of taking care of their responsibilities. Because there were other times that we drove and we didn't capitalize because of the team or the unit as a whole on offense. Somebody, somebody did something wrong. This guy jumped off sides, this guy held whatever it was. We didn't seem to click very well. At the end of the day, we're going to do a great job of preparing next week. We got Missouri coming in town. What I would love to see is us be a little bit more explosive, be a little bit more aggressive on offense. And I'm looking forward to seeing our dogs get back after it.